she was in a shared room, a, a dormitory, and um, he asked for nobody. For, he asked that nobody be put into that room with him. Is my understanding, and she was put in there anyway. Um, and I believe, and I was told that she asked to move rooms. traumatizing as that was and it really was re-traumatizing to write that book it, it was part of my redemption if you like it was part of my cathartic journey being brought to the place of Mia's death um, but I'm sitting in the cubicle where Mia died and apparently she fought for her life even with chest injuries even after a blow to the heart Mia was still fighting for her life I'd like to think that it would be helpful to people who have suffered a loss um, who, who are on that journey uh, of um, of recovery from from a loss but also victims of trauma because I definitely think that um, grief is traumatizing in some respects or can be for some people there's a, a criminal edge to it and um, there's a whole network of hostels that have been set up that aren't really about um, providing accommodation. They're, they're basically ripping backpacks off and that's the kind of thing that's, that's really concerning. You're left in the lurch, I think, in, in Australia because um, there's issues with your fruit and veg not being picked. Um, so you've got a shortage of labour and I think you you must be starting to realise how important your migrant workers were to you and how important the backpackers were in terms of the sheer volume of, uh, of workers that was provided by that system. So given that that's the case, it seems now that the time is right to implement that Royal Commission and to really look at all the different the fair work reports and all the different um, you know, the information out there that's been collated and come up with some solutions because personally I don't think the 88 days is a viable solution. <laughs>